Hello. Hello, teacher. Good Hello, teacher. Good evening, Carla. Good evening, Luis. How are you today, Luis? I'm fine, and you, teacher? Pretty good, thank you. Did you work today? Yes, I work today. How was your day? Yes, all day. Did you find traffic today? No. No traffic. It was free. Oh, no that's, traffic. That's nice. And what about you, Carla? Did you work today? No, teacher. It's my day off. What's your day off? Okay. Yes. That's nice. I thought that since we are in a national emergency, probably you work in their day off. Yes, I know. <laughs> so that's why I, I ask you. <laughs> I know it's your day off. Did you do anything interesting today? Check platform. Oh, you check the platform. That's yes. nice. And the rest of you, Gloria, how are you today? Hi. Fine, teacher. That's great. So you're teaching Thank online, you. right? Yes. Okay. How much time do you teach? One hour, two hours? Oh, no. One hour. Una hora de clase. Half. One Maybe. and a half. Wow, it's, it's a lot of time. Only, solo media hora. <laughs> ah, half an hour. <laughs> oh, 30 minutes. Half an hour. 30 yes. minutes. Ah, okay, that's nice. It's, Hi, teacher. It's okay. Hi, Maria. How are you today? I'm doing well at home. At home? You're not working? No, I'm no, I'm no, no working right now. Yeah, but you have a job. No. No, you don't have a job. No, right now I didn't have. Okay, maybe, maybe when it, when we finish with this topic of the coronavirus and things like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. We could look for a job then. And the rest of you guys, how was your day? How was your day? Fine, teacher. Very fine. Okay, great. Iris, how are you today? Very, very good. <laughs> okay, that's nice. All right, well, yesterday we started with a new topic. Do you remember the topic? Demonstrative. Aha, uh -huh, demonstrative. So we're going to watch a video so you can review that topic. <laughs> Okay, we have this here. Oh, okay, I don't know. I don't know what I've done. No, 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 I don't want to print it. <laughs> Okay, here we have. By the end of this lesson, participants will be able to use demonstrative pronouns, this, these, that, those, to express possible choices. Hello, this is what we're going to do. We will listen to the audio program first, try to follow the topic, and as soon as it is done, we will talk about it. Demonstratives, one, ones. How much is this necklace? How much is this one? How much is that necklace? How much is that one? Which one? The blue one. It's $42. How much are these earrings? How much are these? 
How much are those earrings? How much are those? Which ones? The yellow ones. They're eighteen dollars. Prices: forty-two dollars, fifty-nine ninety-five, or fifty-nine dollars and ninety-five cents. As you realized, we're talking about demonstrative pronouns. As you know, there are four: this, these, that, those. I know you have studied this before, so we will make a quick review. This, singular, near. These, plural, near. That, singular, far. Those, plural, far. Therefore, we use is for this and that, and are for these and those. In English, we use one or ones very often when talking about choosing or having more than one option. For example, I ask, is that your car? Which one? The red one or the blue one? The red one. Yes, it is. The words one or ones always go at the end of the question and answers, and they replace the noun in question. Okay, that was just to review yesterday's topic. As you remember, we discussed about the uses of one, ones, these, this, that, and those. So we studied that yesterday. That was just a review so you can remember that topic. And about telling prices, it's also mentioned here in this video. And let me make it bigger for you. Okay, when we are asking for prices, we use how much is when we are asking about a singular item, right? So we say how much is. But if it is plural, we use are. How much are? If we are asking for a plural thing, right? So you have the examples here. Remember that this is for singular, near, that, singular, there, or far away. Um, this is for plural here, and those is plural away, right? And when we have a choice, we ask which one for singular, which ones for plural, right? And the and one or ones, it's gonna be always at the end of the question or at the end of the sentence. As you can see here, it's at the end. When you're giving price, um, it's, and you mentioned the price when it's singular, there, and the price when it's plural. También cuando se está dando un precio, se usa it's y el precio cuando estamos dando el precio de un objeto en singular. There y el precio cuando es plural. And then we have here same prices. Cuando estamos diciendo el precio, it's, uh, si se fijan en... Es diferente el signo este, se parece al del colón, ¿verdad? Solo que solo tiene una rayita acá. Cuando se escribe el precio de los centavos, en centavos, este signo es para los centavos y va después del, de la cantidad. Si se fijan acá, 79 cents. Uh -huh. Este es el signo de centavos y va después de la, del número de la cantidad. El signo de dólar. Ya lo conocemos y se pone antes de la cantidad en números. 18 dólares. Y luego cuando estamos diciendo el precio es 24, la cantidad, eh, la primera se refiere a los dólares y la segunda a los centavos. No es necesario decir cents. 24.95. Let's listen. Page 17, exercise 3, grammar focus. Demonstratives. One, ones. How much is this scarf? How much is this one? How much is that scarf? How much is that one? Which one? The yellow one. It's $24.95. How much are these gloves? How much are these? How much are those gloves? 
How much are those? Which ones? The gray ones. They're eighteen dollars. Saying prices. Saying prices. Seventy-nine cents. Eighteen dollars. Twenty-four ninety-five. Okay, that's the grammar focus about. Do you have any question about this, or is it clear? Is that clear for you? Yes. Uh, in my okay. case, yes. Yes, All right. Perfect. So you can um, develop this exercise in your notebook. Put that in practice. Mm -hmm. I have to make it smaller. Okay, here you can take a look to the pictures. And you will see that uh, what well, they are asking and saying prices, and you have to take the picture as reference, right? As you can see in the conversation number one, she said, excuse me, how much are those jeans? She is the, she's the customer and she's the sales person. Same. So the customer is asking, excuse me, how much are those jeans? Because it's far and it's plural, those jeans. So how would we continue the conversation? Which? Which ones? Which ones? Uh-huh. Which one do you mean? Do you have to complete the conversation? Do you mean these? Do you mean those? Those? Mm -hmm. These? <laughs> this plural and near.
Are you ready? Finished? Not yet. No. Okay. Let's do it. Yes. Okay, we're going to check the answers. Do I have a volunteer for the first one? How do we finish this conversation? A volunteer? I teach her. Okay. I am a volunteer. Okay. Which ones? Which ones? Okay. Okay, here, do you mean, it starts, excuse me, how much are those jeans? Which ones? One. Do you mean this? Blue ones. Do you mean this? Uh -huh. No, the light blue ones. Let's see. No, the light blue ones. Uh huh. Oh, oh there. 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 Those are, aunque si ponen de yard está bien también. Those are $59.95. And then she says, wow, that's expensive. Okay, let's practice pronunciation. Let's repeat. Excuse me, how much are those jeans? Excuse me. Excuse me, how much, how much are those jeans? Which ones do you mean this? Which ones do you mean this? Which one do you mean this? No, the light blue ones. No, the light blue ones. Oh, those are $59.95. Oh, oh, so oh, oh, wow, that's expensive. Wow, wow. That's, that's expensive. expensive. All right, uh, volunteer for the second conversation. How much is this? <coughs> like? I can. How much is How much this? Backpack? Backpack. How much is that backpack? How much is this that? Mm -hmm. That, porque él es el cliente, él pregunta el precio y la mochila está lejos de él. Entonces, yes. that. How much is that backpack? Backpack. Uh -huh. How much is that backpack? Which one? Which one? Which one? Uh -huh. Which one? The red one. 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 Correct. Uh -huh. 
But I have another. But, but, this. but uh -huh. they are. Mm -hmm. but Teacher, they it's correct if I say, but I have another. Yes, it's correct. Aunque estamos utilizando lo que estaba en el cuadrito de gramática. So, pero es correcto decir, ah, but I have this. But this green. <laughs> but this. Aha, uh -huh. but this green one, but this green one, it's only 22.25. Then he said, that's not bad. Can I see it, please? But this not bad. Okay, um, let's repeat to practice pronunciation. How much is that backpack? How much is that backpack? Which one? Which one? Which one? The red one. The, the red, red, red one. one. It's $36.99, but this green one, it's only $22.25. It's only That's not bad. Can I see it, please? That's not bad. Can I see it, please? Can I see it, please? Okay, good job. Can I see it, please? Can I see it, please? Okay, then we have another video in the platform and it's about sentence stress and pronunciation. I imagine that you have checked it, but in case you haven't, I'm going to play it. Okay. This one is about pronunciation and sentence stress. Let's see. Hello to all of you. I want you to pay attention to the stress given to the important words when speaking. In this lesson, participants will listen to sentence stress in order to improve pronunciation. Sentence stress. Notice that the important words in a sentence have more stress. Excuse me. They're perfect. I like the blue one. They're not very attractive. The idea is for you to listen to the audio and then repeat. Practice as many times as needed. Okay, as you see, while well, you can watch the video, this the number is, well, in the section number three is the exercise 3.6. And you can watch that video. That is to, um, as you see, the important word in English when, when speaking, the most important words are stressed. And we can practice in this other exercise too. Okay, I'm going to play the recording so you can repeat. And where you see this, um, we have a in the syllable stress, right? The biggest dot here, it represents the stress. Listen. Page 18, exercise four, pronunciation. Sentence stress. Part A, listen and practice. Notice that the important words in a sentence have more stress. Excuse me. 
That's expensive. I'll take it. Do you mean these? Okay, play it again so you can repeat. Page 18, exercise 4, pronunciation. Sentence stress. Part A, listen and practice. Okay, you repeat after you hear, please. Notice that the important words in a sentence have more stress. Excuse me. Now you. Excuse, Excuse me. me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Very good. Very good. That's expensive. That's expensive. That's expensive. That's expensive. Very good. That's expensive. I'll take it. That's expensive. I take it. Take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Take it. I'll take it. You mean this? Do 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 you mean this? This? Good job. Now let us move to the next exercise. Look at this. How much is it? Okay. Here we have some vocabulary about materials, the most common materials that we can um, find in our things. Okay, that's just vocabulary. Let's repeat. Cotton. 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 River. River. Gold. 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 Silk. 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 Leather. Leather. Silver. 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 Plastic. 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 Wool. 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 Any new word for you here? Wool. 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 Lana. Lana. Exacto. Lana. Wool. Wool. Rubber. Rubber is uh, caucho. Ule. 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 Caucho de lo que son estos. Estos, por ejemplo, estos serían rubber. Rubber boots. Rubber boots. Wool stocks. Uh-huh. The leather is a cuero. Is a cuero. cuero, exacto, cuero. Mm -hmm. Any other? Any other? No more. Okay. A cotton shirt. A cotton shirt. Uh huh. And the, the first one is a silk tie. ¿Qué es silk? Seda. 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 Ajá, seda. Una corbata de seda. A silk tie. And number two? A plastic bracelet. A plastic Ajá, a plastic bracelet. And number three? A gold, gold ring. ring. Gold. A gold a ring. Gold. Number uh, four? A cotton shirt. A cotton shirt. A cotton shirt. Uh, Excellent. Uh, number five? A leather, a leather jacket. jacket. A leather jacket. And six? Silver, Silver earrings. 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 Silver earrings. Uh -huh. Silver earrings. Number seven? Wool. Rubber. 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 Uh -huh. Rubber. Caucho de hule, rubber boots, rubber boots. And the last one, socks. Wool, wool socks. Aha, son de lana. Okay, that is because we, as you can see, you have that vocabulary in this conversation and we're gonna practice that conversation before we continue to the next topic. So oh, that was the vocabulary that was needed. This is, I prefer the blue one. I'm going to play the audio so you can listen the conversation. Page 19, exercise nine, conversation. 
I prefer the blue one. Part A. Listen and practice. These wool sweaters are really nice. Which one do you like better? Let's see. I like the green one more. The green one? Why? It looks warmer. That's true, but I think I prefer the blue one. It's more stylish than the green one. Hmm. There's no price tag. Excuse me. How much is this sweater? It's $139. Would you like to try it on? Uh, no. That's okay. But thanks anyway. You're welcome. Okay, do you have any question about vocabulary here? What is warmer, warmer teacher? <laughs> warmer. Okay, that's uh, our topic is going to be about that. Warm, la palabra warm sin el er, ¿qué significa? Cálido. Caliente. Cálido, exacto, algo que Tibio. es cálido. Entonces, si eso significa sin la er. Eh, mm. as, ajá, warm. Es muy caliente. Warm. Si le ponemos el er, estoy diciendo es como más cálido. Es, ah, si se fijan, están comprando y están haciendo una comparación. comparación. Ajá, y de eso es lo que vamos a estar hablando más tarde. Cómo hacer comparaciones. Si se fijan, está comprando y hay dos suéteres. Dos suéteres. Entonces, le pregunta, which one do you like better? ¿Cuál te gusta más? Mm, déjame ver, me gusta el verde más. Y luego le pregunta, ¿por qué? Y le dice, luce más cálido. El er es, es haciendo, el, el adjetivo es warm. Ese es el adjetivo, warm, cálido. Pero como quiero hacer un comparativo por los dos suelos que estoy viendo, más cálido, warmer. Se le agrega er, warmer. Warmer, warmer. Y ya vamos a ver cómo, cómo irlos cambiando, cómo ir uh, haciendo eso, eso cuando estamos haciendo comparaciones. Eso es lo que vamos a ver ahora después que hayan practicado la conversación que les acabo de mandar la, la, la captura a su WhatsApp group para que puedan practicar esta conversación con sus compañeros. ¿Quieres solo en el local? All right. Click join or unirse so you can get into groups to practice the conversation. María. María. Solo María está. Mirna. There is another girl. <ríe> Mirna. Bye. Comencemos, pues. Ajá, son tres en la conversación. Brett, Lisa <ríe> y el vendedor, que dice ahí Clerk. Ah. Uh -huh. Brett, Brett, Lisa. Y ah, el cierto. que dice Clerk es el vendedor. Yo. Son, son tres. Bueno, soy Brett. Lisa. Realista. Ah. The green one? 
Why? It looks warmer. That's true, but I think I prefer the blue one. It's more stylish than the green one. Mm, there's no price tag. Excuse me, how much is this sweater? It's a... Uh, what about Oscar? And Oscar? Oscar, are you there? Oh. Yeah, teacher. Uh -huh. I hear. Son tres. Puede ser que uno haga bread, otro Lisa, y el tercero el vendedor. Donde dice clerk es el tercer participante, el vendedor. Ah, oh, sí, sí, está bien. Uh -huh. You can start again. Ok. Y luego cambian okay. roles. Por ejemplo, si al principio Dani es Brad, en la segunda conversación Dani puede ser Lisa y en la tercera ah, puede okay. ser el clerk para que Perfecto. practiquen okay. todos los papeles. Iniciamos nuevamente, teacher. Yes. Ok. Oh, pónganse de acuerdo. Voy a ir a ver otro grupo. Luego regreso. Thank you, teacher. Ok. okay. You're welcome. Thank you, teacher. That's true, but I think I prefer the blue one. It's more stylish than the green one. Mm, there's no price tag. Excuse me? How much is this sweater? Come on, Karen. Karen? Oh. Karen? It's, it's I don't $139. $139. Dollars. Dollars. What would you like to try in one? Oh no, that's okay. But thanks anyway. You are welcome. Okay. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> let's practice again. Uh -huh, and, you can continue uh, practicing. Pueden cambiar roles. Pueden ir cambiando. Ok, okay hey. ahorita Karen fue clerk, ahora puede ser Lisa o Brett. Uh -huh. Change. Ok, change. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. don't know. Uh, Felipe, you can be clerk. Yes. Ok. okay. okay. Uh, You're welcome. That's it. Ahora cuál? Okay. Yo creo que solo esa era. Vol sí, solo esa. Si quiere, volvemos a practicar antes de que se termine. Ajá. Vale, ya, todos, ya todos practicaron los tres. Como por ejemplo, Kenia, a la primera conversación tal vez fue Brett. Luego Kenia hizo el papel de Lisa mm. y por último el del Claire. <laughs> Sí. Ah, ok, perfecto. Entonces creo que les queda tiempo para uno más en lo que terminó la sección. Muy bien. Va, está que, bien. Lo que podemos Bye. hacer ¿Qué ahora es agarrar...
Oh, okay, <laughs> you did a very good job. I heard you practicing. Well, the main objective of this is to learn how to make comparison, as you asked me. And I sent you, before the class, I sent you a chart. I sent you this chart. Okay. I don't know if you receive it to your WhatsApp, this mm -hmm. chart. Yeah, okay, see. to make comparisons, we usually use adjectives, right? Um, so most of you, um, la mayoría de ellos, los comparativos, es cuando estamos comparando dos cosas, porque también existen los superlativos. Entonces, cuando estamos comparando entre un grupo de cosas, la mejor, ¿verdad? Ese es un superlativo, pero ahorita vamos a trabajar solo con los comparativos. Cuando hacemos comparaciones, dos cosas, como vieron en la conversación, estaban comparando dos sweaters, ¿verdad? Entonces, la mayoría, o bueno, adjetivos comunes, esto es con sílabas, trabajamos con sílabas acá. Las sílabas en inglés se dividen por pronunciación. Por ejemplo, el adjetivo cold. Solo escuchamos una sílaba, cold. Nice. Nice. Una sola. ¿Ok? Para hacer comparación con adjetivos de una sílaba se le agrega ER. O solamente una R. Por ejemplo. Ah, y luego se agrega dan, que el dan sería como qué. El adjetivo cold. Aquí ven, le hemos agregado ER, colder than. La colder palabra than, than. Ajá, es, es como para decir uh, que in Canada, winter is colder than summer. Este es el ejemplo que tenemos acá. En Canadá, el invierno es más frío que el verano. Verano. Ajá, sí. in ajá. winter is colder than summer. Pero no sería mejor decir en Canadá en invierno es más frío que en Estados Unidos. En bueno, Canadá como que, como, siempre hace, como que siempre hace frío en Canadá, sea la estación que sea, pero cuando es verano hace menos frío. Sí, <risa> chévere, hay una pregunta. Ajá. Eh, after adjective, we use just a uh, gerum. Aquí, uh, no, no tenemos gerunds acá. No, 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 it's, a, it's another question. It's not related to the topic right now. Como por ejemplo? Eh, for example, eh, I just, I, I don't have a clear idea, but I, is just a uh, inquiry. Co como, that como. I, como si después de un adjetivo puedo usar un germ. Ajá. Mm. ¿Es una regla gramatical o se puede también usar un infinitivo? Yo sé que no tiene que ver con el tema, pero lo vi y, y quise como, como aclarar esa, esa incertidumbre. ¿A dónde lo vio para ayudarle de mejor forma? No, anteriormente yo había visto como esa regla, pero no sé si, si es, es aplicable. O sea, no estoy segura. Mm, no, nunca he visto que después de un adjetivo eh, vaya un verbo. Porque normalmente después de un adjetivo va un nombre. Porque el adjetivo es lo que hace es describir Califica. un nombre. Calificar Califica, ¿no? el nombre. Ajá, Entonces, ajá. Nunca he visto que haya un verbo después. Y un segundo sería como un verbo con ing. En sí, no, no he visto eso. Normalmente un adjetivo sigue un nombre. Ah, ok. Entonces, eso quería saber. Uh -huh. Sí. Gracias. Ok. Uh, um, como pueden ver acá, el adjetivo nice ya termina en e. Por eso, para hacer comparación usando nice, solo agregamos er. Nicer than. 
chocolate ice cream is nicer than strawberry ice cream. Y cuando van al final no se les pone el dan, como se fijaron en la conversación, dice it looks warmer. Ya se sabía previamente de qué estaban hablando o qué era lo que se estaba comparando. Si los adjetivos tienen dos o más sílabas, se agrega more than y el adjetivo no cambia. Aquí el adjetivo, esto a veces tal vez es relacionado con su pregunta porque boring es un adjetivo, no es verbo. Lo vemos con ing. Boring es un adjetivo y significa aburrido, no es una acción, no es un verbo. Entonces, si escucha la pronunciación boring, tiene dos sílabas, boring. Entonces, en este caso ya no les agrego er, sino que voy a anteponer la palabra more, como ven acá, luego el adjetivo tal cual y luego done. I think golf is more boring than baseball. Ahí estoy comparando dos deportes, golf y béisbol. Estoy viendo cuál es más aburrido para mí. Pienso que golf is more boring than baseball. Luego tengo expensive. ¿Qué es expensive? Caro. 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 Mucho dinero. Entonces, si ustedes escuchan expensive, Expensive. Tiene tres sílabas. Expensive. Expensive. Ajá. Expensive. Tan, tan, tan. Entonces le voy a agregar more. Luego el adjetivo tal cual. Expensive. Y luego done. This restaurant is more expensive, expensive. than that restaurant. Uh -huh. Aquí tengo otra regla. Dice... Adjectives with two syllables that end in Y, change a Y to I and add ER plus DAN. Si el adjetivo es de dos sílabas y termina en Y, vamos a cambiarla por I latina, agregar ER y luego DAN. Por ejemplo, early, el adjetivo early, es temprano, ¿verdad? Termina en Y, early, early, early. early. es de dos sílabas, early. Ajá. Uh -huh. So in that case, earlier than, cambiando la Y por latina y pues. He arrived at the school earlier than I did. Happy. It, it changed, as you can see here, happier than. John looks happier than David. John parece más feliz que David. No, eh? Now, if adjectives end with a single vowel and a consonant, si el adjetivo es, termina en una vocal y consonante, y es de una sílaba, y lleva estrés, se dobla la última letra antes de agregar el dan. Por ejemplo, big. Big. Es una sílaba y, y lleva estrés. Big. Big, suena como, como explosivo, ¿eh? Big, tenemos que hacer una fuerza de voz, stress, big. Y termina en, en este patrón que dice acá, consonante, y antes de la consonante hay una vocal. vocal. Entonces Ajá, aquí se duplica la última consonante, que en este caso es G, bigger than Russia. Ajá, Russia is bigger than Canada. Ahí estamos es comparando grande. dos países. Ajá. Rusia es más grande que Canadá. Russia is bigger than Canada. Ahora el adjetivo hot. Hot. Si ustedes escuchan, también suena con estrés. Hot. 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 Entonces duplicamos la última consonante porque tiene este patrón. Consonante, vocal, consonante. Duplico la última consonante que en este caso es T. Agrego ER y luego el DAN. Uh, in my country, August is hotter than January. Okay. Y también hay adjetivos irregulares. Son los que están acá abajo. Estos son irregulares. ¿Qué quiere decir irregular? Es que no siguen esa regla. Por ejemplo, el adjetivo good. No puedo decir gooder. 
sino que cambia a better. Y luego le agrego el than. Good cambia a better than cuando estoy comparando. Puede decir Samsung is better than iPhone. I prefer Samsung. Bad. Bad cambia a worse. Peor que. Peor que. Bad, el adjetivo bad que es malo, él cambia y se dice worse than para hacer una comparación más malo que. So you can say um, uh, oh. if far, far yeah. es lejos, él cambia a farther than, farther than, más lejos que, farther than, o también se puede decir further mm -hmm. than, es lo mismo. Qué complicado. Oh, no tanto. Teacher, teacher. Traten, de, traten de escribir oraciones porque mañana, bueno, como ya se nos acabó el tiempo, yo no sé por qué esta hora no la siento. <risa> Tengo otra clase ahorita. So, eh, lo voy a dejar aquí solo con esta explicación, pero tienen tiempo. Sé que algunos están trabajando, sé que algunos otros no. Pero tienen, mañana no hay clase, es viernes y el cuerpo sabe que pueden ver Netflix o películas. Ahora ya no lo sabe. Ahora ya no sabe qué día es, ¿verdad? Entonces, mañana es viernes, no hay clase. Pueden hacer oraciones como estos ejemplos que tienen acá, poniendo en práctica eso. Tienen viernes, sábado y domingo. Sí, es cierto. Y nos vemos el lunes, lo vamos a practicar juntos en clase. Les voy a traer más ejercicios acerca de esto, porque inglés es práctica. Ok. Miss, I have a question. Dan era, it's for compare, right? Para comparar, sí. Ok. Uh, I have another question about the homeworks. Uh, right now, uh, we are in the section two, three. right? Oh, ah, three. section three, yes. Ah, ok, ok. Teacher, Thank teacher, you. I, I have a question. Yes. Uh, we have only three, three adjectives, irregular. Only three, or there are more. Hay más, pero los más comunes son esos tres. Los okay. otros casi no los veo. Uh -huh. Ok, ok. Thank you. Uh -huh. Sí, esos son los más comunes, los más usados. Uh -huh. Ok. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Happy weekend. Thank you. Ok, have Bye a nice teacher. weekend. Thank see you, you on Monday. You. Try to practice, make your sentences, and see you on Monday. Okay. 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 Have a good you weekend. Bye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye, take care.